Tonight, Gloria Steinem will present the F word, feminism today. This spring marks the 40th anniversary of her receiving the first honorary doctorate for human justice awarded by the college at that year. She also delivered the commencement address to the graduating class of 1973. In her commencement address, Ms. Steinem discussed gender and racial inequality and the caste systems which enabled these disparities. She called for action and change and noted that Simmons women were contributing to advancing the landscape. Reflecting on Ms. Steinem's 1973 address begs the question, how far have we come? How has Simmons helped move the agenda forward? Are we going to have a great time tonight or what? So I went back and I looked at my graduation speech and I see that 40 years ago I said, we are talking about a deep and anthropological revolt against the caste systems of sex and race, against all those systems that divide us up. I just want to say to you from the bottom of my heart that when I said that, I had no idea <laughs> how true it was or what it meant. I really, I, you know, people say the longest journey in the world is the journey from head to heart. And I think that's true. You know, we intuit things and yet we don't deeply understand them for many, many years. I was very touched, as you can imagine, when I received this invitation. I travel around the country a lot. It's kind of like reading a novel. I go back to the places I was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and find out what happened. So to be able to come back 40 years later is an amazing life experience. But now I am much more moved to be here because I have spent the day meeting you. So I have some idea of the great hearts and great minds that are in this audience. I spent the day meeting the Department of Women's and Gender Studies, Girls Leap, Self-Defense, Swag Center, the Simmons Institute for Leadership and Change, Strong Women, Strong Girls, Vision 2020, Student Government, Tara for Student Government, the Like Minds Coalition. So I have some idea <laughs> of who's here. Gloria Steinem was kind of an icon of my life. She had to really stand up to um, a whole cultural experience back then. Because of the kinds of things that you have done and, and uh, taken leadership in. There are more women in business, more women in law, more women in, in medicine, more women in all of the positions of leadership in this country, and more women in politics. We cannot have democracy without feminism. It is simply not possible. We are constantly also being told that the movement is over. And this is the new form of, of opposition. I mean, the same folks who used to say to me that you can't possibly do this because you're going against nature, you're going against God, you're going against Freud, you're going against something. I can testify that sometimes it's the very same people who are now saying, well, it's over. You've succeeded, this is all you could possibly want. So remember that that notion that it's over is just a form of resistance. I would definitely say that women are better off now. However, are we where we need to be? Absolutely not. There's a long way that we have to go before we have equality. In the world generally, females are valued more for our wombs than for our brains. In this country too, our bodies are valued more as ornaments than as instruments. More for how they look than for what they can do. So all of this is only a scintilla of the reason 
that we're here tonight to discuss the F word, feminism. When I applied for my first job after leaving Simmons as a math graduate, I had to apply to a health wanted men's ad because at the time there were health wanted men's ads and health wanted women's ads. So unfortunately I had to apply as M. Kirschenbaum rather than Marsha. And when the call came that I got an interview, I had to accept it for my husband. If we think about uh, where we were 40 years ago, where we are and where we're going, I think we begin to see that we were just establishing terms 40 years ago, and we are now beginning to apply those terms universally instead of supposing that they are only tied to, to one group. If you look at the abolitionist and suffragist movements, it took them a hundred years, at least, to gain for women of all races and men of color a legal identity as human beings and citizens and voters. A hundred years. That was legal identity. Now we are striving for legal and social equality. So I don't know how to break this to you, but I think <laughs> We have at least 50, 60 years to go. And before, finally, it is without question the case that citizens are citizens, human beings are human beings, and the gender prisons that cause uh, men to be uh, not to be loved unless they win, and women not to be loved unless we lose, uh, the gender police, you know, will have lost, I believe, and we will finally be see, understood to each other as unique human beings. As a successful activist who has affected great change within culture, what advice do you have for young women and men who are looking to take action against rape culture and victim blaming? Tell stories. Our brains are organized on narrative, and we do empathize with each other. Every issue that I know of came up through people telling the truth about the stories of their lives. Rape isn't about sex, it's about violence. It is about control and, and violence. And also, that it also happens to men. Knitting together the inspiration of the civil rights movement to the feminist and every other social justice movement. We understood that the caste systems of sex and race were intertwined, but I don't think we understood exactly why. We knew they came together, but we didn't understand why. Now we understand that the only way you can continue racial separation or class separation or ethnic separation is to control reproduction. What happens is that the so-called superior women, whatever that means, are uh, restricted in order to maintain racial or class or ethnic purity. They are kept on a pedestal. But as a black suffragist said to her white suffragist sisters, a pedestal is as much a prison as any other small space. We have a lot, a lot to do together, and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart and the last 40 years that you are going to have such a good time doing it. It makes everything else boring. It is the basis of everything. What advice do you have for little girls who want to make a difference just like you did? First of all, you have just done a great thing, which is that you have spoken up in it. <laughs> Do what you love, because there's a unique person in here that has talents no one else on earth has. Thank you. What particular role, if any, do women's colleges or women's education play in today's equality movement? One kind of education doesn't work for everybody and therefore we need many kinds of education. And it is crucial, crucial, crucial that we maintain women's colleges, that we maintain historically black colleges, um, you know, because especially people who have lived on the periphery need an experience at some time in life of being in the center. And, and it, it's... 
it's true, it's profoundly true on this campus. I feel the love and support and respect that you have for each other. It's a great experience just to walk here and get the vibrations. Simmons was so important for me because at Simmons I saw girls become the leaders uh, that, you know, that they have become in their adulthood. They were the head of the student body, the head of the school newspaper, um, just the, the heads of other kinds of organizations at, at Simmons. I had never seen girls and women in leadership positions like that before and it was just an extraordinary experience for me and, uh, and has been a motivating factor my entire life. And as you know, a way disproportionate number of, of women achievers, of women in political office, uh, especially also women in science and math, have come from uh, women's colleges. I'm very grateful to you and to my college of Smith College for hanging in there. My daughter and I both attended Simmons and we both credit Simmons with very successful careers. I was shy when I entered Simmons, afraid to speak up, not sure that what I had to say was valuable. I left Simmons not at all afraid to speak up about anything. Of course, one of the functions and important things about a campus full of women is that you do support each other. You don't punish each other for success, right? Right. I see Simmons as a beacon of leadership in American higher education, a resource to our nation and the world, and a global expert in educating women for their own empowerment and for leadership. From the beginning of our being, Simmons has encouraged us to be in the world and to make a difference. Continuing to live our mission has stood the test of time and is our true north. It is vital that we hold our place, hold our values, and continue to create opportunities for women to live their very best lives.